Hi, I'm Ethan Schoonover, Mr. E, and uh, at Ethan Schoonover on Twitter. A couple of days ago, I released a screenshot of a database that I use to manage my D&D games and all of my students at the school that I work at, and I thought I would post a video of this. This is like a really rough prototype video, so just bear with me and uh, forgive me if it's a little uh, bumpy along the way, but we're just I'm just going to kind of breeze through some of the features of this database and let me know. Is this something that you would want? Is this something you think would be useful? And if so, I'm again, I'm happy to publish it. So just to recap, this is a product called Airtable, available at Airtable.com for free. Uh, there's like a paid tier and a free tier. The free tier is super complete, uh, especially for like a, a moderately sized database. You're going to be fine with it. So take a look at it. Uh, it's a database, and a database in, I mean, you can see here it's just a bunch of different tables. So we've got our players table, our characters table, uh, the different groups table here, and these are all uh, interlinked. All the cells are interlinked. Within cells interlinked. Within cells interlinked. Why don't you say that three times? Uh, cells interlinked. And you will see that that linking allows me to do cool stuff. Uh, so let's take a look right now at the way that I'm using the players table. Oh wait, first, before we do that, I told you this would be bumpy. Let's breathe through the different tables I have. So players, their characters, the groups the players are in, the different sessions they have played. So every time I have a physical face-to-face -face session where we get, sit around at a table, I record it in my database. The events that have happened in game. And I've only populated one example here, but like I keep track of this stuff so I know like what's gone on uh, in what session with which group. And so we've got, uh, let's see, NPCs, notable NPCs and their unique qualities, locations, uh, fantastic locations. This is actually modeled off of Sly Flourish's fantastic locations concept. And parents, <laughs> fantastic parents, because this has saved my life a couple of times. I actually, uh, when I was running summer camp this past summer, I had, uh, well, I took all the girls the, in the D&D summer camp to the archery range and I had, you know, 14, 15 middle school girls on a bus and we were driving back and we hit traffic and it was terrible. And so I'm literally like not moving in traffic, sitting there and I'm like, well, we're going to be late. Everybody's going to be sitting there waiting to pick up all their students. But I had this Airtable database on my phone and I just opened it up and I tapped all the phone numbers and opened up SMS messages. I let everybody know where we were, when we were going to be back. And it was great. And you should always like, especially if you have students, and you know you have to like I have to manage pickups and you know when parents are coming to to get their child and are they coming to get their child, you want to have the phone numbers and emails and things like that accessible quickly and easily on your phone. So let's talk about how I'm using all these different tables. Uh, in the players table, I keep track of their basics: the email, first name, last name, etc., notes, and which group they're part of. And then there's a bunch of other stuff over here. Let's see what's useful. All of this is mostly lookups from other tables. We'll talk about that or links to other tables. So in the groups table, for instance, uh, I can create like different groups. I might say like 18, 19 um, home game if I wanted to keep track of my home game. I usually give these groups a little identifier, an ID, home, 18, 19 home in this case. And then I can list who the current players are. Um, maybe. Andy's going to come over, and he's in our, our home game. We'll add some others later. Okay, and that lets me use that information elsewhere. So if I wanted to add, for instance, my friend Carrie, and I wanted to say Carrie is in my home... Whoops. Let's try that loading again. Home game right there. Uh, then I can see that she's in my home game. And one of the cool views here... So uh, Airtable, by the way, lets you create these views. Uh, so I've created a bunch of views. One is a kind of a grid view, like a spreadsheet-like view, which is by group, uh, just a list of everyone, also kind of a spreadsheet-like view. And after school only, if I wanted to see just the players that are in my after school club. But one of the ones that is most useful for me is by group, so I can see my players by group. And I've got, uh, let's see, I've got my, oops. I don't know why Andy, oh, Andy's in two different groups, so he shows up twice here. That's interesting. I told you it would be bumpy. Uh, we've got our after school club players right here, and we've got our weekend weekend club players right here. And then Andy is in his own little group here because he's in two different groups. Um, probably not the way that I would want this to actually show up, but that's okay. 
Lesson learned. If you have somebody in two groups, maybe that's not the way to track them. All right, so we'll go over to characters here. And lo, oh, this is the coolest one. Okay, so here's my problem. My problem is I have like, I don't know, 42 students right now that are playing D&D at my school. It's like a third of the school. Um, it is hard for me to keep track. This is a shock, I know. Hard for me to keep track of all their characters. And some of them do have multiple characters. So here's the characters tab. This solves that problem for me. And here's how I use it. Uh, first of all, there's a ton of information. Every character gets tracked pretty well here. You can see that I've got like, uh, this is a, a lookup, by the way. This like, what group is this character part of? Uh, who's the player? So I can see that uh, like Bilbo Baggins is played by, it, it, the player is Martin Freeman. Uh, yes, forgive me the rampant theft of the stars of stage and screen here. Then we've got like what race they are, and this is just a drop down select. Uh, I can say what class they are. This could be a drop down select too. I just did um, text entry on this one. I did background because I keep track of the backgrounds of my students because they start off at level zero with only a background and no class. Uh, inclination for me is like, when, especially when they're level zero, I'll ask all my students like, what are you interested in? Are you interested in magic? Are you interested in nature? And that lets me know sort of like how to help guide their character arc a little bit. And should they become like, are they going to, if they're interested in nature, how can I help introduce them to becoming a druid? Uh, then alignments and don't at me. I just did these all randomly. I know Bilbo is probably not lawful evil. Uh, and spotlight skills. So I'll say like, you know, so-and-so reads um, Infernal. Uh, so-and-so speaks draconic or like whatever their special kind of highlight skills are that I really want to use and say like during the game give them some epic moments that only they could do because of their skills their special skills uh, and you'll see how I use those in just a second on these cool little cards and then of course any character notes uh, let's see what else oh yeah I love this this is awesome um, if I say so myself which I do so these are their ability scores and you just enter these numbers and you can see like, you know, what is their strength? What's their dexterity? Then over here, I have these like calculated views that show me, for instance, this is like the stats plus view. Oh, it looks like I'm missing a parenthesis on the end. Uh, the stats plus view gives me the, like the little letter S for strength, shows me 14, and then it calculates the modifier for me. And so I can just punch in the character's ability scores, it calculates the modifiers. Uh, I've got another view here, which is the similar, but it's just the ability score, and then yet another view, which is just the modifiers. So depending, depending on your play style, you may want any, all, or only one of those particular sets of numbers to show up on a quick reference card for your character. And let's take a look at those quick reference cards now. So again, I, I told you that you can create your own views in Airtable. One of those views that I've created here on the characters table is the PC cards view, and this is it, and I love it. Um, normally, this would be pictures of my students. Uh, these, shockingly, not my students. But what we've got here is we've got the character name, Bilbo Baggins. We've got the player, Martin Freeman. Spotlight skills, Speaks Draconic. Summary, Halfling, Rogue, Lawful Evil. And in this case, I'm showing off his modifiers. Uh, if To be honest, for me, it's actually easier if I am going to look at just their ability scores. So I can quickly change that. And now I'm seeing just their ability scores down there. Uh, but that's a way for me to really kind of quickly know right away what their abilities are, what their spotlight skills are. And what I do is I will print these before a play session with my students. And so I have a face to go with a student. And this is really helpful for me early in the year when I don't know all the students' names. I have their character name in front of me. I have their spotlight skills. I have their abilities. And I have a summary of their character. You can make these as big and complicated as you want. I try to keep them fairly small because then I can, sometimes I'll cut them up into like actual little cards. Quite often I'll just print them out on a sheet of paper at, right before we start playing and I've got them in front of me and then I know everything that I need to know and I can keep it updated. I can make little notes on the paper and then go back and update the database later. Or I can update the database in real time if I'm using the computer in front of me, which sometimes I do. Uh, let's see, groups, and again, this is all dynamically linked, so if I add somebody, like a player to a group, they show up here. Um, I can expand any record. You can do this in Airtable, just with that little expansion, double arrow, and then I can see, like, a list of everybody that's in that group. I could take some notes or add a notes field if I want to. Sessions, uh, right, so every time I play D&D &D with the girls, I will keep a note of that here in the sessions. 
you can be as detailed or not as the at this as you want. And the way that I do it is I just click here, choose a date that we played. I choose, and then you can see that the identity, the session ID is auto-populating. I will choose the group. Uh, let's do home game here. And you can see it populates it. Then it says 1819 home, and then it uh, suffixes the date. And that's the session ID. And I can take notes about the session. Uh, I can do attachments. And I can also say who it was attended by. Then we have events. And events is really, this is also super important. I keep track of the special events that happen in game. So we rescue Daisy from the bandits. Then I record that we rescued Daisy from the bandits. I can say where that happened. Um, and it, that's just a link. So I'll click on this and I'll link to one of the many locations I pre-populated in this uh, example database, one of them. Uh, Grimwater, so that's the location it happens is. Who in the NPCs that are, were present? Any notes about the event? Uh, what PCs were present or instrumental in the event, and which session this happened in. So again, all very useful. Uh, let's me look back in time and say like, wow, three weeks ago when they rescued Daisy from those bandits, where were they? Who was there? Uh, using, and you can also, I could actually then start to do like a lookup and I could say, you know, based on this session, which group was it? Um, let's do that. In fact, right now I'll link to, I'll do a look up, look up based on the session. I will then look up which group that was. Okay. So now you can see that I just added this field and we'll call this which group. And so if I add another field here and I'll say this was the, um, I don't know, dungeon crawl. And that location, well, we'll add a new location and we'll call that um, the dungeon was in Widow's Basin. And I can just add that new record right now. So I just created a new location. We'll look at the locations table in a second. Very easy to add stuff in Airtable. Uh, the NPCs that were there, well, that NPC was Rob. We'll add a new record named Rob for an NPC. No notes about Rob, but if I wanted to, I could double, I could click on Rob, and I could just add a note, which I would say like, as a limp, Carrie. That's that's for you. That's my friend Carrie's character, Rob. He does indeed have a limp. Uh, let's see notes. Uh, let's see PCs. Let's just do some random PC adding right here. The folks that were in it. Gandalf was there. What session this was? and which group automatically gets populated. So you can see now I've got weekend club and home game. So if I wanted to, I could look at all of the events from a particular session, or I could also just look at all of the events that happened to a particular group. So I'm now filtering just for the home game. And you can see how that worked. And I'll get rid of that, and now I see everything. So if you have a lot of stuff happening, you have multiple groups, you're in my situation effectively, that kind of filtering and tracking of which group is doing what, super helpful. NPCs tab over here, you can see all the different NPCs that we've got. They have some notes. Uh, we just added Rob, Rob shows up here. Uh, you could have like photos, you could add a, an attachment to these records and have like a picture, like an NPC picture. I like doing that. And then you could actually print those out and show them to your players as you're playing the game. Uh, you would print them out the same way that you print out these character cards. Locations. And locations in the game, uh, we just added Widow's Basin, and that shows up here in our locations table. So again, very easy to be somewhere else in Airtable and add a location or add some other record. But each one of these locations, uh, pretty basic stuff. You can see it's got a picture. We can link to special NPCs. I link to Rin here. Rin lives in Grimwater. Uh, you can see events that happened in that location. And just useful to see kind of like that way you can give some lore and history and like kind of catch yourself up and see what's go been going on. And we already looked at the parents tab, but boy, if you have students, don't forget that one. So. I hope this was useful. I hope it was interesting. Uh, if you'd like to see more, if you'd like to me to publish this publicly, or you'd like to see some changes or modifications, uh, let me know. Happy to do it. And thanks for watching. We're done.